Welcome back, y'all. It's Glamour Magic Beauty. I might change my channel name, but I'm going to ride with that right now because that's what I've had since the beginning. I know I've been gone for a while, but I'm back. Let's talk about Ice Spice, her agenda, industry plans, and the state of female rap. Okay, let's start off with Ice Spice. She's been crowned by Days Magazine as the People's Princess. Nicki Minaj got in the comments, said... Yeah, Princess of Rap. So people are feeling like she's got the Nikki Co sign. They feel like a feature is coming. We know that that would catapult Ice into, you know, the stratosphere. She's already killing bitches. She's already did an interview with Erica Badu for Interview Magazine, I believe. She's, you know, just did days. She, um, I'm sure Paper Magazine is coming. Um, and then she just did. What else? Oh, yeah, she was on the cover of New York Mag. And um, she's probably be at the Met Gala. So she's she's moving on up, you know, very, very quickly. She was nobody yesterday. And today she is, you know, the latest megastar. I mean, munch popped off and it just like, boom. This girl has no former EPs. Um, like is her only EP, first EP. Um, she just had a few you know, not even really never heard of really singles. And then next thing you know, Munch pops off and she just boom, like overnight. So here we are. Um, she definitely has a big, big machine behind her. She's got a PR machine behind her. She's definitely connected to somebody in the industry. Comment below who y'all think um, Ice Spice father is because they're hiding her parents on purpose, please believe. Um, the reason why you can't find pictures or can't find anything about Ice Spice's parents and really her real story is by design. The industry does that, y'all know. She probably has a whole fake identity. Please do not let it slide past you that her government name is Isis and that she was born January 1st, year 2000. Mm, her backstory is definitely looking very curated and again, um, designed, engineered. She's got a PR machine. Every time I turn around, she's in the media. She's got articles, headlines, this and that. Headlining Rolling Loud overnight. Big ass stage, big ass crowd. You know, she's got a budget for nice clothes. She's hanging out with the Kardashians. You guys already know what it is. You know, she's definitely a part of the agenda. She's got the Annie hair. She's pushing the SpongeBob agenda. You know, Annie Annie was a very occult Broadway, you know, play. So if you guys know the truth, you know, if you if you only knew the truth about Ice Spice, it would blow your fucking mind. You know, and I'm not interested right now and I don't really I don't wanna say I'm not interested. I just really don't care. I mean it'd be it'd be interesting to know, but it doesn't really matter because guess what? The girl is making hits regardless. She's here to stay and she is dethroning people. I think um Ice Spice is here to dethrone Lotto and Coyle Ray. Lotto's music is not sticking. She's all radio play. People aren't streaming and buying. Coyle Ray, all radio play. People aren't streaming and buying. Them two are, they're, they're, you, this is how you know they're not making any money off music because even though radio is pushing them, guess what? Like they, they aren't, they're, they're sampling so much of their music. There's so much sampling, you know, of older music and, you know, I just, it's just tired. So a lot of people don't like her attitude. You know, why would they? They don't, and she's very phony. She's copying Ice Spice. She's copying Nikki. She's copying Koi. Like she's always copying, you know, copying Doja. She's a copier. She doesn't have her own identity. She doesn't have her own brand. She's making her brand being you know, 21 chromosomes is, you know, side piece. That's not really working. And, um, you know, it would be great if he could have at least got her a feature with him and Drake, but you know, tough luck on that. But, you know, again, people don't like her and that's really the tea. It's like, people kind of have to like you. People don't like Lotto and the music isn't good. People don't like Coyle Ray like that. And the music isn't good. Um, her one of her best. Her, what what are her some of her best songs? Okay, that I can really think of. Blick Blick with Nicki. Then she goes against Nicki. You know. Um, then what's the other one? About me. You know, that's a good song. And then the Lonely at the Top. 
that's a good song. But I think Koi Ray has three good songs. That's about it. You know, the talent isn't there with Lotto. The talent isn't there. And I'm not saying Ice Spice is necessarily talented, but she can make a hit and she's likable. Um, and clearly she's got, a, again, a big PR machine and a, just a lot of industry connections to her. Um, she probably is one of those MK Ultra children. Definitely. She's got the butterfly tattoo to let me know. Um, who's the other one that's new? Glorilla. Glorilla has already done her Travis Scott, you know, type sacrifice slash ritual. You know, Gangsta Boo is dead and so is Young Dolph. Meanwhile, Glorilla is flourishing. Um, and another one overnight, you know, signed a deal in the industry. They immediately get her a blonde wig, an icy chain, an icy watch. And um, what else did they give her? Veneers and a record label, you know, record contract. So um, Glorilla, I don't think she's going to last. I think she's here today, gone tomorrow. Um, Cardi has pretty much hijacked her damn song because she's sinking and, you know, just fucking going through, but, you know, I think people like Glorilla to some extent, but it doesn't look good with all this shit with people dying at her concert. And that's again, by design, you know, these people have dues to pay. You already know what time it is. So with her in the deep voice, you know, I don't think she's gonna last. I really, really don't. I think, you know, I think she's just a fad. Um, she may prove me wrong, but I think she's just a fad. Um, because she's, she's not, basically it's just not going to happen next to Ice Spice. She doesn't have the looks and she doesn't have the hits. So, you know, I'm wishing Glorilla the best, but she's another one who is probably connected to the industry through bloodline, which is part of her, you know, quick success. Um, and she's from Memphis. They're doing a lot of little Memphis rituals right now. You guys are paying attention to the news. Why is all these Memphis people dying and Memphis people this? And um, it's just a lot going on with Memphis right now. So that's, again, definitely on purpose. And then her middle name is Hallelujah. So, you know, she's like, oh, I grew up in the church, blah, blah, blah. Come on. It's giving so blasphemous. There's something really more to her story. And I just, I don't believe who none of these people say that they are because they're not who they say that they are. You know, these people will come to you. They've spent years, you know, just building an image for these people and building a this and that. Like, these people are not who they, you know, pretend to be. Now, those are some industry plants. Comment below how you feel about those two people. You know, Glorilla's mom, no shade, looks like an extraterrestrial. And... Not to say she's ugly, but she just looks like she's not human. And these people are connected to fallen angels and bloodlines. Please believe. So extraterrestrials are real. You know, the Greys, the Anunnaki. You never know who these fucking people are. Stay woke. Let's move on. Sorry, y'all. I'm having some food. Okay, I'm back. So let's talk about the people in the game, the girls in the game right now and where and where they are. Nicki Minaj, top of her game, the queen. We love her. You might hate her, but you can't say she's not the queen, okay? Nobody is selling like her. Nobody has a fan base like her. Nobody has influence like her. And what we're really here to talk about, the reason why there is a state of female rap is because of Nicki Minaj, this is why this is why we're talking about Ice Spice. This is why we're talking about Glorilla. This is why we're talking about Lotto and all the other girls I'm going to mention on this list because of Nicki Minaj. And you don't have to like that or you may really love that, but it can't be disputed. It's undisputed truth. All these girls want to rap because of Nicki Minaj. Okay? This is who they want to emulate. This is why they wear wigs and bud and nails. Like she has set, like like Joe Budden was saying, like the the template of what people want to be. Just like Lil Wayne said it, you know, with the dreads and all the colorful dreads and the chains. Like we just see a generation of their children, so to say. So Nikki's still the queen. She's at the top of her game. The hits are hitting. Red Ruby the Sleeves is a fucking hit. She has released hit after hit after hit. I, to be honest, I really wasn't a fan of Super Freaky Girl. You know, I know a lot of people 
really, really loved it, and it was number one, and all that stuff, and that was cool, but I really wasn't a fan of it. You know, I've had enough of the freaky music, but I really, really do enjoy Red Ruby the Sleeves because it's just, it's it's really real Nikki. Like, I still listen to, I mainly listen to Nikki's mixtapes. I listen to her mainstream. I like, I still love um, Pink Friday. I really, really love Roman Reloaded. Um, and, but I, and I, but I really, I still love Playtime is Over. Like, I still play that, like, a ton. I really, really like that um, mixtape. And Beat Me Up Scotty is dope. Um, I still kind of like, the original mixtape better than the re-release, but I like some of the, I like the songs on the re-release. Like I love Crocodile Teeth, but the original has that Mind of My Money song. You know, if you guys know what I'm talking about, and she didn't put that on the re-release. So I, I like mixtape Nikki. Like I like when I like real the real real Nikki when she's just bars bars bars. Like because Super Freaky Girl is like in all that sexual music, and I'm tired of sexual music. Like we've we've had City Girls. We've got all Megan, like, they give us enough sex to last a lifetime. Like, I don't need no more sexual music. I'm sick of little Kim's children out here making all of this, you know, gross music. And the thing is, you know, they over-sexualize all black women in the industry. Because Nicki's made her, again, Anaconda, a lot of other sexual songs, a lot of other sexual lyrics. But I really like when she just serves bars. So... You know, I really fuck with Red Ruby the Sleeves. I fucked with Do We Have a Problem. That was a fucking hit. I didn't like Bust It, but she's been releasing lots of hits. And whether I like some of the other songs or not, people are streaming. So go Nick. Let's talk about Bia. Um, I don't know what's Bia got going on. You know, with Bia, um, I think she makes good music. But right now... I don't know. Bia just, to me, she just doesn't do anything special. There's nothing special about Bia. She has a, she has a cool cadence and a cool voice and, you know, whatever, whatever. But I think she just needs to, she just needs to focus on being her because right now, I think she's getting nervous because she feels like there's so many people in the game. And she's just trying to keep up. Like right now, I think it's a lot of girls who are just, who really don't have their own identity or who don't have their own sound. And they, they really are not talented like that. So they're just, they just scramble to make what's hot. And that's kind of the energy I'm getting from Bia. Because lately, like I heard her doing something that sounded kind of drill and now she's sampling Missy Elliott and it's just like now nah, Bia why did you do that because Flo Millie just sampled that same Missy Elliott song you know and she did a better job on it than you Flo Millie did the when Flo Millie sampled what's that song I got it downloaded I heard it at the VMAs and I was like all right because Flo Millie got bars you know she do but the industry isn't really pumping money into her because she's brown and that's why we need to talk about the colorism that's why it matters and this is the real truth. The reason, the real truth is, then let me backtrack, talk about Ice Spice's role in dethroning the girls. The real truth is right now, Lotto, another girl who doesn't have her own personality, doesn't have her own swag, doesn't have talent, you know, she's she's in the same position as Bia right now, from my perspective. She's, you know, the, the boat is filling up with water and bitches is uh, pedaling, you know, scrambling, you know, panicking, you know, shook and panicking because... There's really, like, these people are so interchangeable. The reason why Ice Spice and Glorilla and Lotto are even in the conversation is because they are light-skinned. The industry pushes light-skinned girls. Flo Millie can outwrap all of their asses. And I don't think Flo Millie is perfect. I didn't really like the last thing I heard from her. But what is this song? Let me see. There's a song by Flo Millie. But Flo Millie does have some good, some good bars. People aren't going to fuck with her. Bedtime, that's the name of the song. Bedtime is a song by Flo Millie that samples Missy Elliott's She's a Bitch. And Flo Millie fucking wrapped her ass off. And I just feel like with Bia, you know, your team, is your team not tapped in? And I'm not saying just because Flo Millie sampled it doesn't mean that you can sample it. Because that's not what I'm saying at all. I mean, I think you will, let me backtrack. If you're going to make a choice like that, you better wrap your ass off because that's the T. Like, I tell people that because artists do that. And 
Because it's the truth. If you take someone else's beat, especially if the song is popular, you better fucking work on it. You better fucking go hard on that beat because what's the point of you taking someone else's beat just to, just to, um, you know, have that, you just, you just, you just fall into the shadows. You're already taking someone else's beat, right? Which means you're already behind the curve. So you really better mix it and master it and wrap your ass off. Like, for an example, Lil Wayne took the fucking problems beat from ASAP Rocky. But I like Lil Wayne's mix of it better. He mixed the beat differently than ASAP Rocky did. And him and I think Corey Guns wrapped their asses off. They did an amazing job. Like, I'd much rather listen to Lil Wayne's version. And that's how it has to go. And Lil Wayne has plenty, plenty songs like that. Yeah, with Kid Kid and some other person. DJ Drama Euro. Sorry, I thought it was Corey Guns. No, it's Kid Kid and Euro and Lil Wayne on fucking problems. They, the mix, the DJ who did the mix, I think it's DJ Drama. If DJ Drama mixed that, he did his, he did it. He kicked ass. And they all killed it. I'm playing it right now. They all killed it. So with with Bia, it's just like Bia. You took you took another beat that somebody. That first of all, it's somebody else's, and that somebody else just sampled. And now you're making. Now you're rapping over it. And she's not giving. It's not giving. Like the bars aren't there. So I don't foresee Bia being around much longer. Um, because she just doesn't have bars like that. And she doesn't bring anything special to the table that I can really tell you. Erica Banks, another one. Um, I'm wishing Bia the best, though, because I like her. as a You know, I like her vibe. But musically, I just don't think it's all there. Um, and maybe she needs more budget, more marketing. She needs more. These, a lot of these girls really need better branding because they don't have it right now. Erica Banks, another one. Struggling, scrambling, going out sad. Just not talented. Should have stayed in nursing school. And I want to like Erica Banks. Like, I don't think she's a bad person. I just think she shouldn't be rapping. You know what I mean? I can. Two things can be true. So, with with Erica Banks, she won't be here much longer. The music isn't sticking. You know, Busted was a TikTok head. The bars aren't there. She looks like everybody else. I don't, I don't see it for, um, I don't see it for Erica Banks. And again, another girl, I wish she did have what it took. You know, I want Carl and everybody else around her to really, really invest in her because it would be nice to see her dethrone Meg, but she doesn't carry herself in the best way. You know, all this bullshit with Nikki is a mess. I wish she didn't do that. And you know, start up all that drama and just, it's just like, Erica, just rap, you know, just focus on you and rap. You want Nicki Minaj to pull you up when you need to pull you up. You need to rap better. You need to go harder. You need to get in the studio. You need to get a pen and a pad. You need to fucking write for your life. Write for your life, bitch. <laughs> like, fuck. I want these girls to win because... I like that there's more female rappers. Like Nicki Minaj, like y'all, y'all want Nicki Minaj to run the game on her own. And it's just like she could, you know, she's done it for a long time, but you know, goodness gracious, like talk about somebody who definitely should have fucking, what is it, scoliosis or something going on with their fucking back because they've been kicking their feet. You know what I'm saying? Nicki Minaj should be fucking wheelchair bound because she's been carrying you bitches for so long. She's been carrying a game. She's been carrying a game for so long because it's like you guys just don't bring much to the table. You bring new music. You bring different sound, different music, but you bring something else to bop to because, you know, people do get tired of just one artist. But it's just like you ladies don't overall, like you don't have the longevity because you don't have the talent. And you're not creative, you're not original. And it's affecting you because you can have a big brand or a big team behind you, but nobody can give you talent that you don't have. And if you don't have original ideas in your head or your own type of creativity, I just, I don't see it for you. Because even Beyonce has a huge team, but she has a really good team. And I, and no matter what she says, I know people think Beyonce is a huge, huge thief. And she does have a history of stealing and taking people's shit. And doing whatever, but I do think I do give her enough credit 
no matter how stupid or dumb or whatever the fuck you think about Beyonce, I believe that Beyonce is pretty creative, you know? I think that she does have some type of fucking creativity in her, whether people write her own songs or write write her songs for her or, or come up with her creative concepts and choreography. I still think she has enough creativity in her and that's to, to last, and that's why she has lasted, is because she has something of her own to bring to the table. You know, everybody needs a team. Nobody can do it all on their own, but you, need, you still need to be bringing something to the table your damn self. You have to bring raw talent. You have to bring drive. You have to bring creativity. You can say what you want. Beyonce can sing, and she can dance. She can't really act that well, but, you know, she's, and she's very, very motivated. You know, she didn't start off as the best singer. But she's motivated enough to keep trying, you know, and to keep to keep going and to keep working and to, to at least try. And that's really all that you need to be able to do. Showing up is half the is half the battle. A lot of these girls aren't even showing up. They're not even writing. And I Spice says she writes, which I hope she does, because here's the tea. Did this just show Coy Ray and Lotto something? If I Spice is writing her own music, even with those baby bars or even lack thereof of that. The bitch, is, the bitch is winning because guess what? You can't fake the energy that comes from writing your own shit, thinking of your own bars, thinking of your own stuff. Like people, it's, people can feel you. Music is, music is a spiritual thing. Y'all girls gotta wake up. So Erica Banks, I'm wishing you the best. I don't think you're gonna be around much longer. And you don't need Nicki Minaj to help you out. You need to help you out by getting a pen and a pad and writing and trying to be creative and doing all that. Sweetie, you know, just an influencer that makes music in the summertime. <laughs> this girl is a substitute rapper, okay? She works in the summers. Um, I like Sweetie. I like her personality. I like that she's about her money. You know, there are things about her that I like. Um, but... I, there are things about her that I don't like. I do think that she's another one. She kind of gives me lotto vibes with with the with sometimes with the accent and the and some of the nails and the hair and the ghetto girl energy. I mean, I know Sweetie has always had had personality and always has been animated. You know, even when you look at past her, but is, it is giving caricature. When it comes to the rap stuff, I hate that she's rapping. I wish she took a different route, but I like that she's getting her money, you know, but she's really not a rapper. She's, people really don't talk about Sweetie when they talk about rap. I'm being generous by putting her on this list, okay? She's just somebody to mention that's in, that's in the game. I don't know what Sweetie is doing. I don't know. She's just putting out, she's just putting out singles every now and then. And what is she what what is she doing? Is she doing pop rap or something? Mom music. I don't know what the fuck Sweetie has going on. Like, I don't know what she's doing. I just know that she's branded as a pretty girl that gets money. And that's working for her. That's a good, good brand, you know. And because that means she can do anything. She's selling nail polish one day. She's selling Big Macs the next day. Um... I don't know. So we be doing a lot of stuff. She'd be doing a lot of endorsements. See, I'm so confused and I'm so lost because these girls really aren't musicians. They really aren't rappers. They're just influencers. So I wish I said we needed the best. I did like her little pretty bitch music playlist. You know, she had a couple good songs on there. Like the backseat song was good. The um, talking about, I think that, that was a good song. You know, she had like some bops, you know, but you know, overall the project was forgettable. There are two songs that I like. You know, and I just moved on. All of her old music, I don't listen to. A lot of these girls' music is like milk. It has an expiration date. You you can bop to it for two or three weeks. If, you know, maybe if you're lucky, two or three months. And then past that, you forget about it. Um, but I'm wishing Sweetie the best and I like her. I just don't think she's another person who probably shouldn't be rapping. Bia, Erica Banks, Sweetie. Y'all shouldn't be rapping. Bia, maybe, but Bia, you need to just be in the film industry making um, mu music soundtracks because your music sounds like it could go really well on Fast and Furious soundtracks. And there's a lot of money in that, as Wiz Khalifa. But your everyday rapper, I don't know, honey. Um, let's talk about Cardi B, Birdie B. Not, not making any music because she's writing, she's another one, influencer. Influencer, one of the biggest influencers in the game. Not really a rapper, raps on the weekends. She raps more than Sweetie, but they're both part-time rappers. Um, 
Cardi B's not really even a rapper. She doesn't write. She's just an influencer. She's writing off Nicki Minaj's brand. She's just she's just Nicki's rival. She's that's all that's all her purpose is. Her purpose is Nicki's rival. You know, they felt like, uh, it, 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 I guess they felt like, okay, Kim is, Kim is dying and, you know, in the gutter. I hear Ice Spice, you know, pretty bitch, but I came from the gutter. No, okay, honey, Lil' Kim is really in the gutter, not you. And I really, I mean, look, I really, I don't know about Lil' Kim. I just, she's okay. I, I, I respect her for what she did for female rap, but she's another one who doesn't write her own music. And she's just a mess. She just turned into a mess. I really feel bad for her. I don't really like her music. It's way too sexual for me. But, you know, I'm wishing Lil' Kim the best. But, you know, she's, she's, I guess because she's so far in the gutter, they just felt like, okay, she's really not competition or she's really not a rival for Nicki anymore. You know, she's, you know, Nicki Minaj has successfully slayed that dragon. So now we need, you know, more ops. And so here we have Birdie B, but... She, the music doesn't stick. The Grammy was fake, you know, and all scripted. You know, it was done to slight Nicki Minaj, as we know. It's all about, she's just enough, she's just a puppet. Cardi B is a puppet. She only got her deal to beef with Nicki Minaj. Now, I guess part of, there was a clause in there, you're going to turn into Nicki Minaj. I don't know. But the music isn't sticking. She doesn't have talent. She's... She should just go into TV. Like, I liked Cardi B before she started beefing with Nicki. Like, when she was on Love and Hip Hop, I fucked with Cardi. But once she started all this Nicki beef, I never fucked with her music. That's, but that's, that's on God. Like, I never fucked with her music like that. You know, Bodak Yellow is cool. But, um, you know, Bick and Head is okay. But I don't like Cardi B's voice, you know. So I really don't, I don't like, she, she doesn't speak English or Spanish that well. And it comes out in her voice. And she has a heavy tongue. So I don't like the way she raps. So she raps all hard and deep. I, she sounds like she's trying too much. I don't like it. Um, so I'm not a fan of her music. But I was a fan of her, you know, she's an influencer. I was a fan of, like, her personality, her being an influencer before she started trying to rap and started trying to beef with Nicki. She's another one. She shouldn't be rapping. Cardi B would have been A-okay if she could have just, like, kept doing acting stuff. She should have used Love and Hip Hop to break off into um, bigger acting gigs and like be, you know, have a comedy show or something, you know. And her and Offset, they're going to end up doing reality TV because their careers are both sinking. Mark, mark my motherfucking words. Her and Offset, they're not going to be rapping too much longer. Both their careers are in the can. No one's thinking about them. They are not going to be around much longer. Not not rapping. They'll both move on to acting and more deal. They're 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 gonna be fucking influencers. Like as long as they do their rituals and 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 stay in line, they'll be phased out of rapping. And <laughs> Cardi B should be phased out of rapping in probably the next eighteen months. Um, Offset, I give it three years, and he'll be done with rapping. Quavo is another one about to move to acting, so it's all over. Moving on, Lola Brooke. Um, another one shouldn't be rapping. Pretty girl. I wish she would drop the hard, you know, masculine energy and persona. Pretty girl, tiny, should be bartending at a strip club somewhere. Should not be trying to rap. She should be in people's music videos for being a, a pretty girl. Girl, get your bookings. You know what I'm saying? Being the video girl in Travis Scott video. Get your bookings. Um, get your bookings, um, you know, be, be, go out, you know, yeah, you, you, people should be throwing money at you at Starlet's in New York. You shouldn't, on, you know, as a bartender, you should be, you know what I'm saying, being cute behind somebody's bar. You should not be rapping. And I like her, don't play with it, but that's like the only song I like by her. You know, her bars really aren't there. So disrespectful was okay, but when they, when we heard her freestyle, it was a mess. She's got the same energy as everybody else. She's another one of these drill rapper girls, wigs, lashes, nails. And it's just like, okay, like Lola, I don't see her being around much longer. And I don't see it for her. I, I think she's a pretty girl. I don't really even know about her enough to know if I think I even like her personality or energy or whatever she gives to the public enough. I like what Bia gives to the public. I like what Erica Banks gives to the public. I will... To, to an extent, okay? I don't think she's a bad person. I think she's just, she just, I just, 
I'm like, you need a pat on the shoulder or something. I don't know, Erica. And I like Sweetie. I'm not, damn, damn, I forgot. I missed the other one. Let me go back to her. Um, but Lola, you know, you're all right, but I don't really know you enough to be like, oh, I, I kind of like you. You know, I like Ice Spice. Lola, I don't know you. So I'm just wishing you the best, but you shouldn't be rapping. Go go apply to Starlet. Uh, Baby Tate. Um, Baby Tate has bars. I think they're not pushing her because... Because uh, she's brown, but I think she's pretty. I think she has bars. I think she kind of has her. She has her own style to an extent. She's doing the wig, lashes, nails, but she also is kind of quirky and stuff like that, which I like about her. So I want her to keep going. I want her to work on differentiating herself even more. She's another one begging for a Nicki feature. It's like, baby Tate, you probably shouldn't have been on Love & Hip Hop. It's not a Nicki feature that you need. You need a better team. You need to keep rapping, keep making music, because you make pretty good music. You know, baby Tate really does. She's original. She has talent. That's the thing. Baby Tate can really come up because she has talent. She has talent. She just needs a good team behind her and to just keep pushing her pen. And to stop uh, whining to Nicki Minaj. But I'm wishing Baby Tate the best. She's one of the girls who who I don't feel like you shouldn't be rapping. Because she does bring stuff to the table. She really does. I've heard a lot of her music. She does bring stuff to the table. She just needs to keep keep grinding. And get a better team. Um, oh my gosh. Lotto. Lotto. You need to stop rapping. <laughs> you need to stop rapping, Lotto. Because you don't have talent. And the thing about it is, Lotto, Bitch from the South is a pretty decent song. Moo Wop is a pretty decent song. It's not like you make all bad music. I don't like Big Energy. You don't make all bad music. You can do a little something something, but you just, your personality is awful. You know, you're one of those by any means type of chicks, and you... You've started all this shit with Nicki Minaj, and now you're doing all this Ice Spice fuckery, and I just don't, I don't know. I think you'll be around longer than I would like, because the industry is going to keep using you as a puppet to piss off Nicki, and you're down to do anything, and so you're a good tool for the industry to use to push their agendas and to... You know, do whatever they need. If they want to, if they want somebody that's gonna do PR stunts, do distraction rituals, do humiliation rituals, kick up faction, manufactured beef, they can call on Lotto. They can count on Lotto. If you need a PR stunt to cover up another train derailment, you can call Lotto. If you need somebody to kick up imaginary rat beef to cover up some of the banks failing and some of the laws getting passed, you can call Lotto. Um, if you need somebody to push um, the beta sex kit in agenda and over-sexualizing women, you can call Lotto. So if you need somebody to push the light skin is better narrative and to push uh, white supremacy and colorism and push you know, just Karens and hip hop, and you can call Lotto. Lotto pushes a lot of agendas. She's a big industry puppet. I like to call them industry screwdrivers or industry wrenches. They're just the little nuts and the bolts that, just the tools that build the house. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know how you treat a wire cutter. You know how you treat a hammer. You don't give a fuck how hard you bang that hammer up against that nail and that screw. Because they're all just little tools to help you build the home or to build the building. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is what these people are. Coyle Ray, you know, Erica Banks, Megan Thee Stallion, Lotto Cardi. They are nothing more than tools that push industry agendas, the Freemason agendas. So Lotto is going to probably be around for a little bit longer, but not forever. Her reign will stop. She will either fizzle out or she'll have to go to reality TV or, you know, acting. A lot of these girls are going to reality TV. You know, a lot of the names that you hear on this list, they're not going to Hollywood. They're going to Atlanta or they're going to Miami to do reality TV. If they go to Hollywood, they're going to Zeus, okay? They're not going to Bravo, um, you know, MTV, VH1, they're not going there. So I'm just telling you the reality. Well, well, they'll go to VH1, 
Um, but you know, like you know, because because they're loving hip hop on there. Sorry, but they probably go to BT, VH1. You know, like the lower ends of Viacom. Are they going to MTV? No, no, MTV doesn't have shit popping anyway. Shit, VH1 is the one running shit still, and you know, and Zeus is, is making a come up. So a lot of these girls you'll see on VH1 and Zeus um, in the future, but um, you definitely won't see them on the charts. <laughs> so I'm just saying, but. With what's her name? Uh, Lotto. I don't really like Lotto's energy, and now with all this bullshit with her and 21 chromosomes, a lot of people don't really aren't really vibing with her, and her music isn't sticking. People aren't really buying it. She's surviving off her radio play. I don't foresee it uh, much longer, but she's gonna definitely go out kicking and screaming. I definitely feel like she'll be definitely one of the main people um, who goes to reality TV once they can't. Um, push any more rap agendas or whatever, whatever, they'll have to go to reality TV. And she will run to Mona Scott Young, you know, with, with the fucking nicest Nikes on. Mona, get ready for a call. Get ready for a casting casting tape from Lotto because she's ready. She is so ready. She wants to be seen so bad. She will love, she loves mess and she loves to do hood shit and seem hood and act hood and talk in her African-American vernacular, a.k.a. Ebonics. She loves it. So she would love nothing more than to get up on reality TV and talk in her hood voice and scrap over a dusty has been, you know, or excuse me, never was ass nigga. Okay. So I just give it, give it, give it 30, 36 months and Lotto will be on reality TV. Um, she shouldn't be rapping. I'm wishing her the best though. Um, I probably would rather watch her on reality TV so I could see her, you know, at least she could entertain me better that way. Cause I'm not entertained by the raps. Koi Lorraine, like I said, Koi, Koi Fish, Ice Spice is shitting on you. And she's also shitting on Lotto. Like Lotto was pressed because Ice Spice is here and completely just kicking the bitch in the gut. It's like, damn Lotto, get up off the floor, bitch. Get off the floor, Lotto. Swing. Because Ice Spice is diving on your ass. And the same goes for Coyle Ray. Coyle Ray, just like, just like Ice Spice, is very industry connected. They are industry bloodline. Coyle Ray's dad is Benzino. We know who her dad is. But what's her name? Ice Spice, her dad's probably a fucking executive. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a Jewish exec. Please believe. Who, who was Annie's father in, in Annie, the play? Daddy Warbucks. Some fucking rich white dude. She's saying her daddy Nigerian. If her dad is, if her dad is a really a actual Nigerian man, her mom is a fucking Rothschild. Please believe. Ice Spice is connected, connected, and Koyla Ray is connected too. But it's not making up for the lack of talent, the lack of vibes, the lack of hits. Koy, you know, you're pushing the the pedo agenda, and you know you're down to do anything. So the industry will probably continue to use you. You might end up on reality TV just like your goddamn daddy. I don't know what's going to happen to you, Koi. You shouldn't be rapping. I don't know what you should be doing, but you shouldn't be rapping. You know, I, I think Koi, she probably should be doing, she probably, she'll probably do something with like the metaverse. She'd be good, somebody to, somebody good to push metaverse and like, maybe like, she should be, she should go to Travis Scott route, you know, push fashion and hype beasts and like streetwear culture and stuff. Do that because rap isn't working. It's not sticking. You're surviving off of radio play. You don't have much talent and I just don't see it for you. I think Koi Ray will be a thing of the past in the next 24 months. Um, if, if you know what's best for you, go the fashion route. If that doesn't work, um, you can join Lotto on Love and Hip Hop, um, or Zeus. Doja, not really a rapper. Um, more of a pop star. They're positioning her as a rapper to compete with Nicki Minaj. She's ripping off Nicki Minaj's style. It's very obvious to hear. Um, she's trying to rap like Nicki. Trying to, they're trying to redesign Nicki with Doja. She's the only real actual competition for Nicki. Because Cardi B isn't competition. She's just opposition. Doja isn't opposition, but she is competition. They've made her competition because they want to deem her as a rapper. So if you put her in the rap category, her streams go toe to toe with Nicki, when she's really kind of more of a pop star. So please get that, Jay. But you know, with Doja, I really don't like her that much. I think she's okay. She's just weird as fuck, and she's really not black. Like this is a problem that I'm having with her and in, in Lotto. And I'm glad Nikki called Lotto a Karen because she is. Um, 
you know, the only thing stopping Doja from passing as white is her natural hair. Because back in the day, she would have passed as white. She could have definitely. If she would have plopped on a Karen wig, she, would, she could have easily passed as a white woman. She looks like a white woman. She does not look black. She has the face of a white woman. She has white features. Um, Lotto has some black features, but her hair and her skin are so light you know, she can pass as white, like, but the drop of black in these girls is giving them the pass to say the N word. Thus they can become rappers and they can play up in black people's spaces. And that is because the industry is run by their white, you know, ooish, you know what I mean? Dads. I didn't say the J ooish daddies who run the industry and allow them to play up in black people's spaces. And then black people are so disenfranchised and so psychologically fucked, you know, that we just accept any old body into our community because Lotto and Doja Cat shouldn't be accepted. In my, in my opinion, they are white women who the one little drop of black in them is allowing them to say the N word and thus they can become rappers when they really shouldn't be rapping in the first place. With Doja, I'm wishing her the best. She's a semi-rapper. Um, you know, she raps part-time and um, she's not that good. You know, she doesn't really have, she, she's okay, but she doesn't have Nicki's bars. She's a great songwriter. I think she she does. Like, Streets is a very good songwriter. She has good songwriting skills, but I think she should just be a pop star. Like, why can't we just have a black pop girl? Like, we have Rihanna, who brings, like, a Caribbean vibe. Doja has her own energy. She has her own vibe. Like, you know, she needs to just compete with Dua Lipa and Ariana Grande and Taylor Swift. She's not really a rap girl. So I'm wishing Doja the best. She's all right. You know, I don't really feel, I'm very indifferent to her. She's okay. Like she has, I only know like two of her songs. Other, like maybe three. Say So, Streets, and Woman. Other than that, I don't really know her music. And then like, oh, I like Get Into It, yeah. You know, so just a few, but I really, I really can't like go, you know, deep with Doja's music. I don't know it like that. She's all right. Wishing her the best. Dochi. Um... I like that she's dark skinned with bars, you know. I think she definitely pulls a lot of inspiration from Azalea Banks. Of course, she's gonna say Nicki Minaj is who she gets a lot of inspo from because she wants a Nicki feature. But she really is our new Azalea. I like Dochi. I like that she's I like her music. She's original, she has her own style a lot to an extent. She has her own style to an extent, and she's bringing something different to the game. Um, she's got some I like her better than Doja Cat, you know. I think she's I think she's actually talented. Seriously. I think Doja's really talented. I think she's pretty original and creative. If she's not I just see a lot of Azalea Banks in her, so I wanna be careful when talking about her because it's just like, you know, I don't know Doji's music that well that well to say if she's super original and creative. I think she has talent. I think I think the song Stressed Out is something that I really haven't heard from Azalea Banks. So I'm going to give her originality and creativity on that front. With some with the song Crazy and stuff, I mean, it's cool. She doesn't really sound like Azalea, but some of her swag and energy just gives me Azalea Banks. Another thing that does, sorry if you can hear me scratching my hair. Another thing that gives me Azalea Banks energy is because Azalea Banks did have like the mermaid and like she's really connected to like water spirits and stuff and then dochi's like talking about like the swamp princess stuff and i think dochi's from florida right but and i so i get that i get that but i'm just like hmm both water creatures both water spirits so they kind of have that in common they're both dark skin they both have like this caribbean vibe because you know uh is banks connected to a lot of dominicans and like she definitely knows her fair share of santeria and brujeria and clearly, Doge, uh, clearly Dochi knows her fair share of, you know, hoodoo, voodoo, and um, you never know, man. I don't know. They just they have some they have some similarities. So I definitely feel like Do- Dochi is Azalea's replacement. But I do think that she's talented, and I think she brings, and that is what is really all that you need to connect with me, because I think Dochi brings her. She still brings her own to the table. 
you know, she's got things in common with Azalea, but I just feel like she brings her own. And I like her because of that. So I want her to stay for right now. I don't know that much about her. I don't know that much of her music. I like the song Stressed Out and Crazy is okay. But the video is a little bit too much for me. The video for Crazy. But I I want Dochi to win because she's dark skinned and I think she's talented. So we will see. And she's really she's really moving cool when it comes to Nikki. But they all want to feature, so we don't know. Dej Loaf. Really not in the conversation anymore. I mentioned her because I miss her. I wish she would come back. She's beautiful, original, talented, was doing things that the other girls were not doing. Bars as well. You know, the song Hey There with Future, amazing. You know, a nice R&B hit. The song Back Up Off Me with Big Sean, a nice rap hit. Then she did Try Me, fucking fire ass hit. Pure bars, original sound, original swag, not doing wigs, lashes, nails, like, crazy beautiful brown like what's up like the industry though probably doesn't want to put money behind her or you know i'm sure if they do put money behind her they want her to like do some weird shit and not everybody wants to sell their soul to make it or for worldly success so if if dej Loaf decided to keep her soul then i big big respect and i definitely i rock with that but if it wasn't that if it's industry politics or industry bullshit then I hope she can get out of that because I do miss her on the rap scene. I hope she can come back. She really did bring something different to the table. And we need people like Dej Loaf. Um, but it's so many people who are who do anything for anything. That's why we have a bunch of these other girls. But Dej Loaf should be making music. She's a great addition to the music game. And I miss her. So I hope Dej hears this. Let's talk about oh, motherfucking this fucking big horsey, Megan. Megan... You started off really, really good. I really liked Megan in the beginning, but she did that Aquarius bullshit, like, which is be fake. You know, Young Miami and Megan, I'm telling y'all about Aquarius women. They can be so fucking two-faced. Like, I don't know what's up with them. With Megan, I fucked with Megan. I thought she was bringing her own style, her own swag, something different to the table when she first started out. Um, You know, she doesn't... She doesn't give many Nicki Minaj. She's she's different than Cardi. She's different than Nicki. She's different than all the other girls. Like, she has her own voice, her own flow, her own whatever, whatever. Like, I like that about Megan. I like that Megan is Megan. She has her own brand. She's got her own sound. She has her own shit going on. And I enjoy that about her. Even though I really don't like how she's come off in the public. And her music hasn't really been sticking as of lately. It's all about sex. <laughs> Her music is sex, 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 sex. It's all about the same thing. And I think a lot of it too is like she just been dropping album after album after album after album. And it's just not sticking. Like I, I appreciate her hustling. Like because, you know, Lil Wayne has released a lot of music. Like he's one of the hardest working rappers. He just releases, releases, releases. Mix it at the mix it at the mixtape. But, and they're all about the same thing, you know. Drugs, money, killing, women, um, you know, just degeneracy, he, you know, but he's got, he's got talent. Like he's, he can rap and he's got some, he's got some good mixes and some good beats. I don't know. Like he's just, the delivery is good. And the thing is not all of Wayne's music sticks with me. Like some of his mixtapes, I'm just like, no, I can't get into them. Some of them, some of them are better than others. But with Megan, I'm just tired I'm tired. And what has really, really worn me out with Megan is the Tory Lanez thing. That has really overshadowed so much of her career. It's just hard to even listen to anything she has to say or whatever, whatever. And with the music, I don't know. It's just a lot of drama around Megan. Like, I didn't like Hot Girl Summer with Nicki. Let me start there. Let me go back there. I didn't like that. I thought it was very mediocre. And I just hated how it was all that drama after. I just really, really did. I just really didn't like that. It was just like all this shit. And Megan brought that on herself because you was talking shit about Cardi B with Nicki Minaj. And then you ran off and did a song with Cardi and was all her bestie. And that was just weird. And Cardi B doesn't give a fuck about Megan. She's just, she just needs a hit. She just, Cardi B is all about herself. But Megan, that was just weird. And then all this all this drama it's like she falls out with everybody people always say oh nikki beats with everybody well megan falls out with everybody like her mommy is dead her grandma is dead where the fuck is her dad she fell out with kelsey 
who again y'all refuse to believe is her fucking sister they look so much alike they sound so much alike they are clearly related but you guys refuse to see it and that's why the illuminati will always win what else? Her stylist, you know, um, Carl, Tari, Kylie, you know, and a lot of other people. It just seems like Malibu Mitch, you know, it just always some shit with Megan. So I just feel like Megan, you know, all of the drama around you is really like overshadowing your music and your image. You know, she's she's definitely got a big team. She's with Rock Nation. Um, she's all over the place, you know, Nike this and what else does she promote? Popeyes and stuff like that. I just don't think that music is... You know why the music isn't sticking? Because it all sounds the same. Like, you know, Lil Wayne has done different styles. Drake has done different styles. Beyonce has done different styles. Kanye has done different styles. Nicki has done different styles. Like, Nicki has slow songs. She's got, she's got a big hit, like, Moment for Life. You know... Super bass, which is like a love pop song. Like Megan didn't do the crossover pop well with the Dua Lipa Sweetest Pie. She didn't do it well. She and it just I don't know. Like Megan's music, it just is all the same. It's all turn up party music. None of it is she, these some of these girls need like a good slow tempo record. They need a they do need like a, a, a collaboration with an R and B girl. The rap and the R&B girls need to collab. Like, it's all these rap girls collabing, collabing, collabing. And I get it. I get it. But the, especially with women, women, we if, if the men, if Drake can do it, if Drake can be as big as he is, the women got to do, like, we got to link up. Like, 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 what's her name? Nicole Ray and Missy Elliott, they did a good job. When R&B singers get with female rappers, he can be created, girls. You know, that bullshit that Summer Walker and SZA and Cardi B came out with, that was trash. Y'all do better. But I really do want, you know, more R&B, especially because it's all a lot of black girls. So it'd be great if the black R&B girls can link up with the black female rappers and they could do their thing. Like, that would be dope. So I'm just, you know, I hope that happens for the girls. But that's what Megan needs because all of this rap just isn't working. And the last song that I heard from Megan that I liked was Crying in the Car. And that's because it was a different vibe. I'm sick of all this Houston club music. Like, you're mainstream, sweetheart. Switch it up. Um, and try different sounds because it's like, Megan, you're from Houston. You know, try some chopped and screwed music. You know, put a little different, slow your shit down a little bit. Like, you just need to try try different sounds because you're just, you have the same flow. The music is starting to all blend together. You have all this drama. It's just a lot. Like, Megan, I think, you, I think you're okay. You're a pretty decent rapper. You just need to, like, you just need to disappear for a while and, and regroup because you have a lot going on. And it's not working for you. So who's next? Cash Doll. Not making music. Not last time I heard. Well, I heard she was on some song. She looked good in the video. She always does. But Cash Doll, you know, she can she can do a little rhyming here or there. So mm, these girls, they has got a lot going on. Um with with Cash Doll, you know, it's just like Cash, you're not that good of a rapper. You know, she reminds me of this generation's Trina, but is she really this generation's Trina when they're like the same age? But I think she's this generation's because Trina has kind of like Trina's really not musically active, you know, for this generation. So I'm gonna have to even though her and Cash Doll are the same age, Cash Doll. But I can't even say that because Cash Doll isn't big enough to be this generation's Trina. I think if she was bigger, she could be and she would be. But she's just not big enough to, to for me to give her that title. Um, I think the industry has been holding her back because she's brown. You know, there's a big colorism thing. And she might not be willing to do all the things that, like, Megan is willing to do. Because I consider Megan brown. But, you know, Cash Doll is still browner, darker. Erica Banks is darker. Baby Tay is darker. So I don't know. Doji's darker. But some of these girls, I mean, I'm sure there's certain things. Not everybody wants to do, you know, anything to get anywhere. You know, Megan is that kind of girl. Cardi B is that kind of girl. They'll do anything to, you know, Lotto. That's what they all have in common. Those three, Cardi, Megan, and Lotto, 
there's nothing that they don't have any boundaries on what they'll do to make it, you know, and be successful and be famous. So the industry can have their way with them. I don't know if Cash Doll is that kind of girl. I don't think she is. And I think that, you know, she's just kind of doing her own thing. I'm glad that she is on BMF. I'm glad she's acting because a lot of these people, you know, I'm glad they need to go to acting because they really shouldn't be rapping. So I'm just wishing Cash Doll the best. Her baby's cute and she's really not that, she's really not an active rapper, but that's okay. Um, you know, she's all right. I think some, she has some, uh, like, her music is just, it's, it's not that great. Okay. I don't want to say it's all bad. She's, she's got a, a decent song like here or there that you can just listen to, but it's nothing that really is not, is no longevity in her music. So I'm wishing Cash Doll the best. Let me just wrap up, wrap up the other girls. Asian Doll, Dream Doll, Cuban Doll, Ivorian Doll, the other dolls. I'm going to hit all the dolls all out, all in one. Asian Doll, nobody's listening to you. You're not, you're not signed to a label. That's fine. But you're not making any hits. You're not making moves. You've been riding King Von's death for too long. If you didn't ride King Von's death to the core of you, you'd be fine. But... You 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 should have capitalized off of that by rapping, rapping, rapping. You spent too much time tying yourself to a, a dead guy who really didn't give that much of a fuck about you. And I'm only saying that because this he was a rapper girl who had murdered people and had baby mamas. Girl, drop it. You know, you clout chased that situation too much. You may have really loved him, but you should have put it in a in a fucking EP, not a tweet. So Asian dog, you're not that talented. Um, you, you, you're not working hard enough. You're not rapping well enough. The music isn't sticking. I don't know one song by you. Dream Doll, you have a voice. You're a pretty girl, but nobody's listening to you. Like, people just want to hump you. Continue to, you know, be an influencer. Cuban Doll and Ivorian Doll, nobody knows who you guys are. And the music, the, the music isn't known. It's not sticking. I... I, I don't know what you guys have going on. You, you know, I'm wishing all y'all girls the best. If it all else fails, Mona Scott Young has a slot for you all. City Girls slash JT. You know, their music is, they have a decent song here and there. Jobs is a good song. Enough, the song Enough slash Do Better, the first half is good. It was a nice slower pace. They need to do stuff like that. They can make good music, but I just think, Young Miami isn't talented and isn't motivated, and she is holding JT back because JT wants to work. And if Young Miami wanted to work, they could be doing big things, but Young Miami just wants to get pissed on. So, um, you know, they're not going anywhere together. They need to. They need to separate because Young Miami is holding JT back. JT, I think she really does want to rap. I think she does have. She can rap. She's pretty decent. I think she needs to continue to work on her music. But I'm glad she did a song with Summer Walker. JT definitely needs to... She needs to be the one. I want to see her be the one to really pioneer working with more R&B artists. Um, working with more SZA. Because is a huge fucking artist. JT needs a song with SZA. Because she's... SZA is fucking huge. You know? And, um, and, she, and people like her music. And JT needs that. She needs to do music with Summer Walker. She needs to do music with SZA. She needs to do music with um, Dua Lipa. She needs to collaborate with Megan. You know, she does. She needs to collab with some of the other girls. She needs to get out there because um, there's not that many girls who can really help her. That's the sad part. She needs to get a goddamn song with Ice Spice. She might be all right. She, if she gets a song, if, if JT does a song, another, a better song with Summer Walker, a good song, she needs nothing but hits. JT, you cannot afford mid singles. You need straight fire hits to propel yourself. You need a song with, uh, you need a hit with SZA. You need a hit with Ice Spice. You need to be on a song with Uzi. You should have been got that. And... You need a song with just you and Megan, bars and bars. Like, you need to do that. You know, you might need to hop on a damn song with Saweetie. Saweetie's got pull. You probably need to coll collaborate with Glorilla. This is why you need to leave Young Man Me alone, JT. Because, see, I'm making, I'm giving you moves for free. 
that your group mate should be talking to you about. You guys have a label. You have access to these other women. You just need to fucking get busy and you need to leave young man alone because she doesn't really want to work. And she's just holding you back. She is dead weight. She is a ball and chain. Let her go get pissed on and sacrifice her soul to Diddy for a Birkin bag on her own. You need to fucking get to work because you have potential and you need to keep, and you need to do a song with Flo Millie too. You do. You need to do a song with Flo Millie so you can get your shit together and you can rise because you really could if you really wanted to. Um, Maya the Don, I don't know you. I'm wishing you the best. Um, I don't, I don't know whatever you rap. You're just a rapper that I'm mentioning because I heard it was your birthday the other day. Are you are you or no no you were talking about Nicki Minaj. I don't know who you are, but you're somebody. I'm wishing you the best. There's a slot on Love and Hip Hop for you. Um, is Lizzo considered a rapper? I don't think so. I'm not gonna count Lizzo. Young Ma has plenty of plenty bars. I'm. I hope she gets her health together. She's got bars for days. I just think that she needs, she doesn't fit an image that they want her to fit. And thus they don't know what to do with her. So they're kind of putting her off to the wayside. But I want her to, you know, continue to make music. I want her to keep pushing because I think she's a good rapper. And I think she's a, she's a definitely a person on this list who should be rapping. So I'm rooting for Young and May. I'm hoping that she feels better. Um, Steph Don. I don't know what you do. I don't know who you are. I heard about you because you beef with Nikki. Like, I don't know about what you rap. I, you don't seem to have your own style or your own swag. You look like a, another one of Nicki Minaj's clones. Um, and I don't, and I just don't know that much about you. So I'm wishing you the best. I'm sure there's a show on Love and Hip Hop that you could join or a franchise you could join. Um, Flo Millie can rap. Her voice isn't the best. But she can rap. Um, I think if she doesn't find the mainstream success she wants within the next two years, she needs to just go behind the scenes and become a writer. She does not need to be on Love & Hip Hop. Flo Millie can actually rap. I think she's got bars. I, I think she's got talent. I don't want her anywhere near reality TV. I don't want JT anywhere near reality TV. You know, if Megan can avoid reality TV, then y'all can. So I think these those two... I think Flo Millie and JT need to just get fucking busy. Flo Millie, another one. You need to be doing songs with JT. You need to be doing songs. See, see, that's who. That's what JT need. JT, if you that motherfucker scared to rap by yourself, you need to get, be in a group with Flo Millie. Because Flo Millie can actually rap. She can actually fucking help you. Like, Young Miami don't want to do shit no more. Um, that's how the fuck it looks to the public. I'm just your average motherfucker just looking from the outside in. And it looks like young Miami don't want to do shit, bitch. So you might need to, if you want to get be in a group so goddamn bad, you need to call Flo Millie. Um, or call Baby Tate. She might want to be in a group with you. Other people who have talent who can actually add to you. Because as long as you have dead weight, you better off by your goddamn self. You're going to be in a relationship, JT. They need to be adding to you. You need to get a feature with Lil Uzi, too. You really do. You need to get a feature with Lil Baby, too. You need to get a feature with anybody else on that motherfucking label that's doing it. You need to do, like, a cool, quirky song with Lil Yachty. No more rap. You need to branch off from rap, JT. If you want to be big, you need to branch off into R&B and alternative. And, you know what I'm saying? That's why Lil Uzi is so big. That's why Lil Yachty, that's why they're making money. Because you need to branch out and you need to switch it up. I'm rooting for you, JT. I really am. Fellow Sagittarius here, I want you to win. Flo Millie, I want you to win. Um, as far as City Girls as a group, fuck them. They need to go away. They make bad music that influences people to be prostitutes. Um, Katie got banned. I don't know what you rap. I like how you present. You know, you seem cool. You make drill music. I think you need to keep hustling. Tommy Lee. <laughs> You need to go to rehab. I think you have a good voice for rap. You give Foxy Brown vibes, but you're not focused on your music. I didn't even know that you rapped. I mean, I didn't even know why you were on Love and Hip Hop. I didn't know you rapped until the other day when I heard you rapping over Red Ruby the Sleaze beat. I'm not kidding. I did not know Tommy Lee rapped until I literally just yesterday because I heard her rapping over, like I said, 
read with me to sleaze. And I could barely even hear what she was saying. I didn't know what the fuck she was saying. But her flow and her voice sounded good. And I was like, okay, she can ride a beat. You sound like Foxy Brown. If you would focus on your music, you could be further. You know, what are you doing? Another one who's in the same boat, Akbar V. You know, got bars, talented, makes good music. Just needs to focus on her music. I don't know what she's doing, but she needs to focus and get to work because I'm rooting for Akbar. Akbar, get a fucking feature with your baby daddy, Young Thug, if that really is your BD. Get a song with him. He's out here getting fucking, he's out here doing shit for Jerrica, who, who's not talented. He can do something for you, Akbar. You better fucking call Young Thug. Suki Hana, she's a prostitute. Not, she really can't rap. I'm wishing her the best. Cupcake. I don't like her voice. Wishing her the best. Ken the Man. I like the song, Not My Nigga. I think she can make good music. I think she's can make some bops. I don't know where she's at. She needs a new team. I'm wishing her the best because I think she's a person who should be rapping. Sukihana shouldn't be rapping. She should be taking care of her children. Um, Trina. Okay, I mentioned Ken the Man. Trina. Um, not a good rapper. Um... But if she insists on rapping, you know, she just, I don't know. Maybe she needs a new team, a new deal, something. But Trina don't really got bars like that. Rini Rucci. Um, I like her voice. I like her song Elevators. I don't know what her team is doing. She needs a new team. Um, so, you know, but I like that. I, I kind of like Rini Rucci. She's got a good energy about her, you know, from what I can tell. I'm wishing her the best. Azalea Banks. Got bars, just just needs mental help and I and and, and support from the industry. It would be great if she could get back on her shit and and make music. I think she has dropped some music, but I haven't been that big of a fan. But I just you know I want better for her, but she's got to want it for herself. And she really has ruined a lot of opportunity by just flipping out on people and just being crazy. But she just released a new song, so, you know, I'm going to listen to it, and hopefully it's really good, because Azalea is extremely talented. She just needs, um, she just needs mental help, and she needs industry, uh, industry machine behind her, a good team. Malibu Mitch, last one on the list. Um, I don't know who she is. I only know about her because she got into some mess with Megan Thee Stallion. I think Megan tried to steal one of her uh, songs, that song, Plan B. I'm wishing Malibu Mitch the best. Again, I don't know her music enough to know if she's a good rapper. I just know of her. A lot of these girls, I do not know. So I hope that they can, you know, get it together and that they, um, I hope they can get it together and I hope that they can thrive. But Malibu Mitch, protect your music, protect who you hang out with, protect your energy. You know, I feel like you're a decent person. I don't know you like that, but I hope that you flourish. I want to hear something from you. I want you to make a bit a mainstream hit that I happen to hear. Because a lot of y'all, I don't want to seek out because I, I listen to a lot of these girls. That's the thing. I've already given a lot of these girls a chance. I've given... Ken the Man a chance, Rennie Rucci a chance, Azalea Banks a chance, Trina, I've been listening to Trina, I grew up with Trina, Nikki, again, grew up with Nikki, Glorilla, I've given her a chance, Bia, I've given her a chance, Erica Banks, not really, I know Busted, don't know anything else, Sweetie, I've definitely given Sweetie a chance since the beginning, Baby Tate, I've given her a very, very fair chance, listen to a lot of her music, that's how I know that she's so talented. Um, Lola Brooke, I've heard it. I've heard two songs. Lotto, I've given you a chance. Before you even went mainstream, I heard you, Lotto. I gave you a chance. Coyle Ray, I gave you a chance. Heard a lot of music from Coyle Ray. Doja, I've given you, you, you're so big, I've had to listen to you. You're, you're all right. Dochi, Crazy was so big, I had to listen to you. So I think you're okay. I heard Stressed Out, it was good. Dej Lope, I listened. Megan, give way, way, way big, big chance. Listen to a lot of Megan in the past. Cash Doll, definitely giving her a chance. Dream Doll, I've even listened to some Dream Doll. City Girls, yes, giving them a big chance. You know, especially when they first came out. Young and May, yes, I've heard a song or two by her. Um, Flo Millie, yes, giving her a chance. So I just had a lot of the list. I've heard a lot of these girls. I'm not talking shit about them. Ice Spice, I've listened to a lot of her music. A lot of her, the little bit of music that she's got. I've given them a lot of, lot of them, a good in the vast majority of this list, 
I've heard a thing or two from them. That's why I even know who they are. Some of the girls I had to research and dig up so I could make sure I mentioned every, you know, emerging and mainstream female rapper. But um, a lot of them, a lot of them shouldn't be rapping. And those who should, I'm wishing them the best. I want them to make it. I want them to keep pushing their pen and to just keep grinding because talent prevails overall. And get new teams. Get the best team that you can get because you need a good team. You can't do it all on your own. Bring the talent and then that'll attract a good team, hopefully, for you guys, for you ladies. So I'm wishing them the best. I want them to win. Y'all let me know in the comments how you feel about this list and the opinions on it. Let's talk, but let's also be respectful. And I can't wait to hear what y'all have to say. Have a good one. Bye.